the first game of the year off? Man, we touched bases. I mean, it wasn't something that I, that I had enough time to keep staying and recruiting because he knew what he had to do. I mean, I think it humbles him a little bit. You know, you're talking about a guy who had high expectations come in and be the guy, not expect to lose a job, but it also showed him if I don't go work hard every day for something, it can be taken away from him. And we talked about, you know, a lot of life now and, and around us is entitlement. Well, I wasn't brought up entitlement, so I'm not going to coach entitlement. If you want something, you better go earn it, especially if I got to say so in it. You know, and I think Dana does a good job of letting us control our room and say who the guy is. And, if, you know, if it's close, he's definitely getting involved with it. But, you know, we went out. The, he got beat out. Let's call it what we see it. The Dreamers beat him out. Wendell beat him out. I mean, so it wasn't no fluke that those guys in front of him. Nothing against him. And, and a lot of it, he was, you know, he probably hurt early, and then, you know, he got down himself. It's like, man, I don't see no light at Central Tone instead of fighting through it. And so I think being home away from him, just talking to him, and spending more time with him now, and, you know, he realized, hey, I, I got to go out there and fight for what I want. You know, it ain't just because I started, you know, playing on the BCS team. You know, that stuff don't matter. You know, now it's got to go out there and fight every day for it. Was he welcome back with open arms and a little hostility when he came back? You know what? I think because he did his thing the right way in the room. You know, he never, I, at least from what I see, never talked behind any guy's back. You know, I'm sure I'm, if we say people don't look at that different, we're crazy. I'm sure every kid did. Like, how he get to go home because he, he got beat out even if he red shirted. I, I would. I mean, I, I'm not going to share him coach that. So, but I think my job as a coach is to treat him like he never left. The worst thing I can do is make him feel uncomfortable because you're going to never feel like you're going to get a fair shake at things. And I think that his brothers in this room did the same way. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they probably they might be like, how the hell he could go home and come back? You know, we had to sit here and keep working. So, but I, I think, you know, because it's, they're so close in that room and they really care about each other, they kind of, you know, didn't look at it that way. Now, I'm not saying they won't come back up in the spring, you know, if he win the job or he lose the job, I mean, like, what the hell? So, With so many more experienced guys coming back this year, is this spring more for you about putting things in as a team, as a system over individual improvement? I know that's often the focus of spring, but with so many guys and building on that experience, is there a little more team, skin kind of stuff this spring? I think both. I think both. I think that's what as coaches where we come in and as we go through the cut-ups, did we do too much or did we do too less? What are we good at? What are we not good at? Eliminating and adding or and fine-tuning what we at. I mean, every, you know, we won four games, but we were close to being winning 10, being 10 and easy being 10 and 2. The ball bounced the right way or we finished the game. Well, we six games in the fourth quarter, we got the lead and can't finish. Sign of no maturity, you know, no leadership. So, I, you know, as, as bad as we were, we still in our mind were so close as the coaching staff. And the kids know that. I mean, they know how many games we left out there. And I think still, it's still fundamental. There's a lot of stuff we can prove on. We can become better ball carriers. We can become better finishers on our run. We talk about all that finishing forward, running with a low center of gravity. So, you know, I'm running on contact. I don't stop my feet. I keep going forward, learning how to get that hard extra yard. We're talking about all those situations because you're in the Big 12. It ain't going to always be clean, but I still can find a way to go forward to get that hard yard. So, I mean, I think cleaning up that, and I think, I mean, I, we talk right now, the thing we're going to focus on more right now going off season for a running back is finishing forward, running behind our pass, and blocking. We've got to improve because, to me, blocking ain't about I'm bigger or smaller. Blocking is all about attitude. If you want to do it, you'll get it done. You can find a way. And that's my message to them. And I've been watching a lot of film when I'm showing NFL film. When I mean, showing guys that if it matters to you, you'll get it done. And tell them, if you don't block, you're not going to play. And I think guys gravitate to it and they see it, you know, especially guys who think they're going to play on Sunday. You ain't playing for Peyton Man if you ain't blocking for Peyton Man. Point blank. So you're using those examples now so you understand it. You know, like I, I, when Charles was at the Senior Bowl, they had a lot of articles on about how he was the best blocking stuff down there. So and now them guys see, well, when I get on them hard in practice about those little things and, they, and then they watch what they say about him, well, they carry over. You know, people looking for guys who can do multiple things. So it, it kind of helped justify what we was doing in practice.